Praise the Lord. I welcome you to today's service in the name of Jesus, Cat of Nazareth. And today we are going to proceed with the August message. You have no excuse, part two. So today's message, you have no excuse, titled, You Must Be Born Again. Brothers and sisters, it is imperative that every child of God must be born again. We must be born again. We must be born again. It is compulsory that a child of God who wants to worship God, who wants to serve God in truth and in spirit, must be born again. We must be born again. It is imperative, it is compulsory that we must be born again. Praise the Lord. I want to take us to the book of John chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, a minister in the synagogue of the Jews. That was who Nicodemus was. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, because that is what the address those who are leaders of Jews, synagogue leader, leaders. And he said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher that came from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou do except God be with him. When the man came, he acknowledged that Jesus is the sent one from God based on the miracles that he has witnessed that he is seen he came to confess to Jesus that all of us believe that you are sent of God you are sent by God you are the master we've been waiting for but our our, our, our tradition, the Jewish tradition, is still saying that we, we, we still have a Messiah to wait for. But I am coming tonight because I don't want them to see me so that I will know what to do. Because from what I have seen, you are truly sent by God. And Jesus answered this man and said unto him in verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And this man was marveled. What do you mean? To be born again? Should I go back to my mother's womb and be born again? Rabbi, master, I don't understand this one. And Nicodemus said unto Jesus, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? But Jesus answered in verse 5 and said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You may see, but seeing is different from entering. Except you are born again, you cannot enter. Except you are born again, you cannot enter. The kingdom of God. Verse 3 says, Very, 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 I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see. Seeing is different from entering. Once you are born again, you can now begin to see in the realm of the spirit what the kingdom of God is like. Without being born again, you can never be convinced. Nobody can can convince you that there is there is this kingdom called the kingdom of God, called the kingdom of heaven. Except you are born again, 
You need to have the spirit of God to understand what the kingdom of God is all about. When someone preaches to you about the kingdom of God, if you are not born again, you will never understand. Nicodemus was confused when he was told that except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And to compound it further, in verse 5, Jesus said to him again, I say unto thee, Nicodemus, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You need to be born again to see, to understand, to perceive, to comprehend what born again is all about. Born again is not just because you go to church. Born again is not be just because you belong to a, a Pentecostal church or because you are a pastor. You need to be born of the Spirit of God. You need to be filled with the Spirit of God. You need to undergo what is called a martial, baptism by immersion, being immersed in the river, being baptized to the death of Jesus Christ, being baptized to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Once you receive this spiritual, this uh, spiritual, um, uh, what, what I call it, this spiritual um, impartation of being born again, being immersed in the river, being baptized of the water, the Spirit of God will come upon you. The same Spirit that came unto Jesus, that made everyone to understand by the voice that came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. Without that, you will not see the kingdom of God. Once you are born again, you can see the miracles. You can experience the miracles of God. You can understand some of the messages that are being preached, that is being argued upon. Some of the messages of the cross, you will not understand it except you are born again. And you, you have to be baptized of water and of the Spirit, so that the Spirit of God that came unto Jesus when he was baptized will also come upon you. The spirit of excellence came upon Jesus. The spirit of understanding came upon Jesus. The spirit of wisdom came upon Jesus. The spirit of knowledge came upon Jesus. That same spirit will come upon you once you are born again, once you are filled with the Holy Spirit, once you are immersed in the power and, 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 and the glory of God. That is the essence of that water baptism. To be connected to the same ritual that Jesus underwent before a voice came from heaven to announce him as the beloved Son of God, to announce him as the Son of God with whom God is well pleased. For God to be well pleased with you, you need to be born again, you need to be baptized, you need to be masked, to be, to be charged with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs to come inside you. The Holy Spirit needs to come upon thee. It is important and it is compulsory so that you can now talk about entering the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus told Nicodemus that thou that that which is born of the flesh is flesh most of us go to church with flesh flesh carnality we go to church for certain other reasons other than the power of god other than the knowledge of god other than the will of god other than to serve god in truth and the spirit those who are born of flesh is Flesh, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. When you are born again, when you are baptized in the water, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you become a spirit as well. 
That is the essence of being born again. So that you can understand the principle of repentance, the principle of salvation, the principle of being born again. You cannot understand it. You cannot comprehend it if you are not born again. And so don't be surprised when you see people arguing about all these born again people, all these this, all these uh, people talking of born again. What is the difference? This one is saying is born again. Ah, once you are a child of God, you are a child of God. We are all Christians. After all, we all go to church. After all, we all pay our tax. After all, we receive Holy Communion. That does not make you born again. And that may not make you to enter the kingdom of God. Except you are born of water and of the Spirit. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. That is the word of God. So you must be born again, brother. Sister, you must be born again. It is compulsory. You have no excuse whatsoever not to be born again. Yes, you are born into an Orthodox church. But you need to be born again there. You need to encounter Jesus there. You need to encounter Christ there. You need to encounter the power of God there. You need to go beyond, beyond religion. You need to go beyond that. Because Christianity is not religion. Christianity is the way of life of Jesus Christ. To which we, are, we have become adopted children of God. Adopted sons and daughters of God. That is Christianity. It's different from religion. Many churches play religion. And God is not happy with those who play religion in the church. And so that is why you must be regenerated. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must be filled with the power and the knowledge of God. That is what is meant to be born again. Because what is flesh is flesh. And what is spirit is spirit. You need to move from that fleshy Christianity to the spiritual Christianity. You need to be spiritual. You need to go spiritual. You need to go mega in the realm of the spirit. So that you can walk your way through to the kingdom of God. At the end of your sojourn on this earth, you cannot just be known as a Christian. But at the end, you will not make heaven. So you must be born again so that you can make it. Praise the Lord. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. We are all born of spirit. And that is why we are called spirit men. We are spirit men. Verse 7 says, Marvel not that I said unto thee that you must be born again. Do not, do not begin to uh, feel somehow. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell or understand where it is coming from and where it is going to. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Anyone that is born again, you cannot understand him. You cannot understand the way he, he, he moves with his own life. Because it's a spirit. When you are born again, many people will misunderstand you. Many people will, 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 will talk all kinds of things about you. That is how it is. Because the wind blow out where it listed. Are you hearing me? And you will hear the, even the sound thereof. But you cannot tell where the sound is coming from. You cannot tell the kind of life this person is living. Or where he's going to. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And verse 9 said, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus said unto him in verse 10, Are thou a master? Are you a teacher? Are you a pastor? Are you a reverend? Are you a bishop of, uh, in Israel? And you don't know these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know. It is what we know that we can preach about. And we testify that we have seen. And you receive not our teachings, our witnesses. You don't believe what we are teaching you. And how can you understand? Or except you believe, you will not understand. 
You have come at night because of what your tradition says, because of what people will say. Many people are like that. Some people are still in the church, but they go to worship uh, uh, bars, altars in the night so that people will not see them. In the day, they will come in the church and begin to clap hands. Hey, praise the Lord. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh. Praise the Lord. The Lord is seeing you. The Lord is seeing you. Nicodemus went by night because of what people will say. What their traditionalist religionists will say. He went by night to inquire of God from Jesus how he, he can be born again. How he, he, can, he can make it. And now when Jesus told him he will not, he does not understand. And Jesus told him, yes, any man that is, is filled with the Holy Spirit will not always be understood. You cannot always understand us. When we tell you that this and this will happen as a child of God, will happen to you as a child of God, you argue. Why? Because you cannot understand. Because you are still carnal. You are still living in flesh. Even though you go to church, even though you are a church leader in one way or the other, you cannot understand because you are not born again. You are a Christian. Thank God for that. You go to church. Thank God for that. But you are not born again. If you are not born again, you will never understand the things of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. When, 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 when we hear that I will supply all your needs, you, you think it's, it's, it's not possible. You think it's not possible. He will supply all, all our needs. Philippians 4.19 He will do that. That is spiritual. You may not understand it. He will supply all our needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus. Whatever you need is found there. Philippians 4 verse 19. That is the word of God. You will not understand this except you are born again. Because you are flesh, you believe in what eyes can see. What you can see, you can feel, you can see what you can perceive. The application of the five physical senses. But you need to go beyond the five physical senses to the sixth sense, which is the application of the spirit inside you. You must have a spiritual eye to understand. You must have a spiritual spirit to comprehend what God is saying concerning you. Praise the Lord. Verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto you, we speak that which we know. And we testify that which we have seen. But you receive it not. You don't, you, 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 you can't accept it. If I have told you earthly things and you believe it not, how shall you then believe if I tell you of heavenly things? How are you going to understand it? You don't even believe it. There's a controversy going on right now. A man of God that preached about, uh, is it miracle money or something? I think he talked about miracle money. Yes, there is miracle money. But I watched the video, the way he was presenting it. It looks funny. And that is one of the problems. Yes, you know how complicated it is for carnal men to understand the spiritual. And then you are asking them to raise their phones, raise their uh, tablet, and somebody is coming out to testify that they have received a lot. You ask them to raise their phone, they will receive a lot in their distance. If you receive a lot, come out, receive a lot, receive a lot. No, no, no. no. It's very funny. It makes the whole thing funny. That doesn't mean that there is no miracle money. God can give you miracle breakthrough. It is called financial breakthrough. God can make a way where there is no way financially for somebody. 
But once you begin to say, raise your phone, and then you receive a lot, this one receive a lot, even someone who had no dollar account ran out outside to tell the congregation, I have received a lot of uh, is it $1,000 or whatever. You don't even have a dollar account. How did you receive that? Uh, and so that is what makes it a problem to, 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 for them to understand, and even to the body of Christ. Yes, there is miracle money. God can surprise people with money. He can surprise you with money. He can give you a contract that will explode, that will make you mortal millionaire within a within few months. Yes, God can do that. God can do that. Miracle can occur. You may want something to do now and God is backing it and he said, don't worry, my son, I'm going to surprise you. And before you know it, you will go and touch somebody and somebody can come and say, ah, I, I understand that you are, you, you, you are embarking on a project. Can I, is there any way I can, I can be part of it? Is there any way I can assist you? Take this 100,000, take this uh, 2 million and put in that something. That is miracle money. When you, where you never expected it, God will make a way. God makes a way where there is no way. That is miracle money. You will not understand this except you are born again. But I don't, I'm not blaming you because some of us present it as if it is a magic or, or some kind of form. Praise the Lord. There is miracle money. If you believe in miracle, there is no, 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 kind of miracle that God cannot perform. He can do that. But you will only understand if you have the Spirit of God in you. You don't need to argue about that. But I know why some of you are arguing. Because it's funny, you come to see a congregation of about 500 or 1,000 people, you say all of them should raise up their phones, they are going to receive a lot, a lot, a lot, and some people are coming out and saying they have received a lot. If you receive a lot, just come and tell me, you come out now because they are a lot, and they say they are receiving a lot. People who have no dollar account, they have no domiciliary account, they are receiving uh, dollars into their Naira account or whatever. I don't know how that happens, but if it happens, glory be to God. But I want you to understand that there is something called miracle money. Miracle money. I'm telling you the truth. And I believe that same miracle will happen to one of you, to some of you listening to me today. That God will embarrass you with some financial breakthroughs. When he opens it like a tap, that tap will continue to run. It will never be short. That is miracle. That is miracle money. They ask you to supply a product that uh, you, you you don't even know anything about, and you say, "I don't know. I don't know how to supply petroleum product. How do I?" And God says, ah, "Go and meet, uh, or you have an instinct. Go and meet so and so person. You that person can direct you, and that person directs you, and you go there. You may not have money. They say, "Okay, bring. We are going to give you just. Uh, we are going to uh, 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 give you advance payment. You they give like ten million to you. Bring." 50, uh, uh, you, you are going to su supply us uh, 50 trucks, 50 trucks in a week. And you go there, you, su you supply five, they, 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 they punch uh, in, into your account more money. You supply, they punch more, they punch more money. They begin to punch money into your account. Before you know it, you have become a mortar. Unexpectedly, and people would think you do uh, 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 some some kind of things which is illegal. No, it is miracle. That is how God works. I remember uh, years back when I and some of my friends we were using a um, um, four liter uh, uh, four liter container to buy fuel from tanker drivers. Four liter, and sometimes we go and sell it. And, and get some, some cash to use. But it wasn't long, some of these guys became, be, be, became oil marketers themselves. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. They became marketers, become multi-millionaires as well. That's a miracle. And it's called breakthrough. Make a way be made where there is no way. That is how God works. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. John chapter 3. I want to take us. Let's move, jump to verse 15. But that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me let me take it back again. And as Moses lifted up the serpent. In the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him shall should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever that believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior is called born again. Accepting this fact, this truth, with all your heart, with all your heart, he is your Lord and personal Savior. Accept it. When you make this declaration, you will understand it further. When the Spirit comes to dwell in you, the Spirit will teach you to understand it. For God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, not to condemn this world, but that through Him, the whole world might be saved. Through Him, the world might be saved. And I believe that you will be saved after today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believes not in him is condemned already. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you are condemned already. But if you believe in him, you are saved. Believe in him today. Believe in Jesus today. Believe that Jesus came to set you free today. Accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, so that you shall not be condemned. For those who do not believe are already automatically condemned. And you know what condemnation means? Rejection. Cast out or cast away. I pray that God will not reject us. I pray that God will not reject you. I pray that heaven will not reject you. Except a man be born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. You shall be born again. The Lord will help you to be born again. Except a man is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. You will not miss heaven. You will you 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 enter into the glory of God at the end of your sojourn on this earth. You will sit and rejoice and be glad that you worship God in truth and the spirit on this earth. You will not regret your journey to this earth. Praise the Lord. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that does not believe in him is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is the only begotten Son of God. Jesus is the only Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. You and I, we are adopted sons and daughters of God as well, through Christ, because we believe in him. If you believe in him, you have the same status with Christ in God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to this world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds we are evil. Because their way, are, their ways are evil. That light was sent to this world. Light, a man prefer darkness for light. That is where the condemnation comes. 
And that is why many people are out of their ways, going after mundane things, destroying themselves, destroying human beings, killing people, shedding blood, using blood to bat in order to have political power, using blood to human blood. I mean, to do all kinds of sacrifice, watch themselves, human blood, cut off somebody's head, put the blood in a bowl, and pour it on your side as a ritual so that you can have a, a political power. This is where the condemnation comes because that is the exercise of evil men from the darkness of this world, from the dark kingdom of this world. This is where the condemnation comes. You condemn yourself because of your evil deeds. But Jesus is calling on you today. Come out of that evil. Come out of that evil link. And be born again. Except you are born again, all that you are accumulating today shall be vanity of vanity. For everyone that does evil, hated the light, neither come to the light, least his deeds should be reproved. You don't want to come to God. You don't want to be born again. You don't want to be a child of God because you don't want to be reproved. You don't want to be rebuked. You don't want your deeds to be open, to be to be exposed. But it is better that it is exposed than you repent and believe, and God will wash you and make you whole again. But he that does truth cometh to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest. If you are doing the right thing, you come to the light so that all shall see the good things you are doing. Least his deeds should be reproved. They will not come because they don't want their deeds to be exposed. But if you are doing the right thing, you will come to where there is light so that everyone will see your handwork we see your good works that you are doing because of God. After these things, Jesus and his disciples, after these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. And there he tarried with them and baptized. This is why Jesus was going about to Try to rescue people from the kingdom of darkness. Baptize them into the kingdom of light. Impart the Holy Spirit on men. You need to be imparted. You need to be baptized. Think about your life. Think about your future. You know the truth. You know the truth. Don't be ashamed. Don't cover that truth. The more you cover the truth, the more the wrath of God comes on you. Remember, you are going to have children, and most of these things will rebound back against your children. Please, I want you to think. I want you to think and repent today. Come to Jesus Christ. Be born again. Accept Him. Make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. And it shall be well with you. It shall be well with your generation. It shall be well with your family. I pray that this month of August, the Holy Spirit will visit you. This month of August, miracle signs and wonders that pass it all understanding. We meet those believers that are trying to lose hope. God is going to visit you. The Holy Spirit is going to visit you. Elohim is going to visit you. He's going to turn things around in your life. Believe it and you will receive it. Believe it and you will see it. It shall come to pass. And I pray that this week, let it start from this week. Let it start from this week. Let open doors start from this week. Let divine connection, favor, start from this week in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I bless this week for you. I bless this week for your family. Go and possess your possessions. Go and make it and be blessed forever. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that from to today, your life will never be the same again.
In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And the saints of God shout, 